Hello, David here. In this video, I'm going to share some of the process and thinking behind everything. The most distinctive ability in everything is being able to be anything, to be able to see something and then be it, and to see from its point of view. Everything can be embodied and moved around from one place to another. And this means that whatever is in the background can become the foreground. You're playing as the substance of the game itself. Everything can have thoughts. So beyond movement, the first ability that you have is to listen. From this, you see that things are aware of their ecosystems. They're aware of the weather and the season and time of day. They have an idea of what they are and of what you are. You can absorb these thoughts into your mind, and once you have enough of them, you begin to generate your own. The thoughts that you generate are combinations of ones that you've absorbed. All of these fade away over time, so even though the mind persists as you move from one thing to another, it's not permanent. You are not limited by being one thing. You can be hundreds of things at once and move collectively. Everything likes to sing. Similar things will respond to each other. Animals talk to other animals, trees can talk to other trees, and so on. You can also dance. So when you're more than one thing, you can arrange yourself into these patterns. And the particular patterns that you make depend on what kind of thing you are and how many things you are. By dancing, eventually, you will reproduce and make babies. And this applies to everything in the universe. Later in the game, you also have the ability to transform. So it's possible to turn into anything you've already been. If you transform into a planet, you can enter that planet and keep transforming yourself into more planets and keep entering those. And whatever you do, it persists in the universe. So you can travel between all of these worlds that you create and the path is preserved. Everything also plays automatically. If you let go of the controls, it will take over and simulate itself. The way it does this can be customized. You can adjust the abilities that are triggered and their frequency to create custom simulations. I wanted to be able to be a microscopic particle, but also a galaxy and to travel between them. In order to do this, we divided up the universe into seven levels of scale. The collapse scale connects one end of the universe to the other. Scales have multiple ecosystems. There are alien planets and ice planets. At the human scale, we have grasslands and deserts and rocky and snow-covered areas. Of course, these harsh divisions don't exist in the natural world. But I'll tell you why I was confident in using this shorthand. When I was a child, an ecologist visited my school and taught us this practice of throwing a one-meter square in a random direction. From this, he'd be able to describe the entire ecosystem. I didn't fully understand it at the time, but this is exactly how everything describes the universe. Each level is like a pattern of activity, which repeats on each side. So each level is infinite. As you travel between these scale levels, you maintain a persistent line of travel. So if you go from a galaxy to a piece of dust, you can travel all the way back up to be the exact same galaxy. time moves differently at each scale. If you're a tree, the sun will rise and set relatively quickly. But if you're a microscopic thing, it will almost stand still. The thoughts that you encounter are also affected by time. At the galaxy scale, they deal with things that are true over long periods of time. As you go down to tiny scale, things are more funny. At the particle scale, things usually just produce one word. If you become a planet, time is moving relatively quickly. And if you allow it to pass, and you revisit that planet, 
cities will start appearing. And if you visit these cities over time, they become more modern. And so, over the course of playing, you see civilization develop. Everything is designed to expand this idea of what we are, to show that identity isn't fixed. Alan Watts was a brilliant philosopher. I fell in love with recordings of talks he gave on the subject, and so I contacted his son Mark and told him about the project and how it could work together with these incredible recordings. And they're all really one common center called I, which is looking at itself from ever so many different points of view. Everything started as a note that I wrote on my phone in 2014. I don't have a background in game development, and I had never made anything of this scale before. I worked with a talented programmer named Damien Quartz. For years, the project looked very rough and was broken in a million different ways. I would write out the idea again and again and break each part down to tasks that we could work on. I put together various diagrams for systems and did as much visual design as possible. We passed this text document back and forth, which shows how each feature was added and the various hurdles that we had to overcome. The process was difficult because there are no templates for making anything like this. Everything had to be built from scratch. It was a process of getting closer and closer to this vision while adapting to the various limitations we had. I self-funded the project and it took about three and a half years to complete. From making animated films, I had developed the skill of modeling objects in 3D. This process started on day one and continued till the very end. I didn't know how many things would need to be built, so I just started with what seemed obvious and worked my way out. All of these objects are treated more or less equally. Everything has roughly the same amount of detail. Each thing was designed, modeled, and colored individually. Once we developed the infrastructure, it was easy to start populating the world with this library of objects. The thing most people notice about everything is that animals roll in this particular way. I had used this movement style in a short film before, and we brought it into the game. There are actually 12 types of motion used in everything. Things don't roll around equally. A trash can can roll on its side, but an animal only flops over its head. It looks much more natural that way. Most things in the universe fly, Planets don't have a forward axis, while birds and airplanes do. Trees and plants constantly reinstance themselves. Round things roll, flat things slide. Things like fences and DNA are chained together, and creatures with a low center of gravity wiggle. The Everything short film was originally made to present the project at the Berlin Film Festival. It went on to play in many other festivals around the world, and it managed to qualify for an Oscar. It only took a few days to make, and it made me wonder if I had made the entire game just to make this film. I'm a planet! I'm a planet, everyone! Everything launched on PlayStation. This is so crazy. This is so <laughs> mind-blowing. Mac and PC and a year later we did a version for Nintendo Switch. The soundtrack to everything is incredible. It's by Ben Lucas Boyson and Sebastian Plano. It's available on Spotify and on vinyl. The objects used in everything are available for download from my website.
Everything was made with a small but dedicated team. I'm very grateful to all of them. It's always a privilege to be able to show this project and I'm very grateful to share it with you here.